lot of wonderful lessons coming from the book of Job. And today, we're going to consider chapter number two. The Bible declares in Job chapter number two, again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also come among them and present himself. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From walking to and fro in the earth. And the Lord said unto him, And the Lord said unto him, unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job? So this is the second time God is asking the same question to Satan. In, the, in chapter number one, God said to him, Have you considered my servant Job? There is none on earth like him, one that love God, one that fear God and refuse evil. And now again, even after the devil have tested and tried Job, even after the devil have taken all that Job had, Job took his children, took, took his property. And now again, God is asking him the same question. In verse number three, the Lord said unto him, Satan, as thou consider my servant Job, verse number four says what? And Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin, yea, all that a man have, he will give for his life. In other words, yeah, I know I'm guilty of taking away his oxen. I'm guilty of taking away his property. I'm guilty of taking away his children. But guess what? If you touch his body, skin for skin, let's touch the man physically. And I can guarantee you that he will, he will turn his back on you. The Bible continues in verse number five. But the Bible said, but put forth thy hand now and touch his bones and his flesh and he will cast thee to thy face. That's what Satan was saying to God about Job. Verse number six, the Bible says, and the Lord said unto Satan, behold, he is in thy hand, but save his life. Isn't this wonderful? From chapter one, even leading up to chapter two, you will realize that there is a certain boundary line that is set up by God. There are certain things that God permitted the devil to do. And there are certain things that God said you cannot do. And could I tell you that once God said you cannot do it, Satan, nothing can happen because the devil do not have the power over God. If God said to him, go, he has to go. If God says stop, he has to stop. And so we got to understand, we got to stop to consider who is the powerful being here? Is it God or is it the devil? Could I say to you, while Satan seems to be powerful, God is all powerful. Let's continue the Bible. The Bible says in verse number 8, verse number 7 says, So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with souls and boils from the sole of his feet and his foot unto his, the crown. And he took him some posture and, and scraped himself wherewithal. Verse number 9, Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thy integrity? Curse God and die. So let's stop and consider a little while. His property was God. All that he possessed was gone. His children was gone. His health is now deteriorating because the devil would have touched him. And the one person that, that Job would have thought he would find comfort in, his wife, his partner, his, 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 the one that, that is closest, that should be closest to him, she is now saying to him, do you still maintain your integrity? Why don't you curse God and die? What exactly is Job's wife saying to him? Hey Job, does it really worth serving God? Look at what we had and look at where we are now. Look at what you used to be and look at who you are now. Does it still worth serving God? Could I ask you a question today? What is happening to you? What have happened in your life? What troubles have, have you faced? What trials have you met? Does it still worth serving God? My answer to you is yes. In spite of what happened to you, in spite of what happened to your family, that God is still worthy to be served because we have to remember, we have to stop and consider that everything comes from God. Our help come from Him. Our help come from Him. Our position come from Him. The finance that you have come from Him. And so even when you lose all of that, don't lose your relationship on God. Don't lose your relationship with God. Don't lose out on God's mercy and God's grace. Let's consider a couple more verses. The Bible says in verse number 9, verse number 10, sorry. But he said unto her, Thou speak as one of those foolish women speaketh. What? Shall a man receive good of the hand of God? And shall he not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. What a wonderful example it is for us to follow that in spite of what we are going through, in spite of the situation, in spite of our surrounding, 
God is still worthy to be served. That you can still trust God. You can still hold on to God. The one that knows the beginning from the end. The one that knows everything. The God that knows the, the everything. You need to keep holding on to God. You can't give up on God because of your situation. You can't give up on God because of your circumstances. God is worthy to be served. God is worthy of our praise in spite of our situation. Have you stopped to consider that God is worthy?